I thought for this one I would talk about that main and tool of writers, the Mary Sue. Now, for those of you who do not know what a Mary Sue or male counterpart, usually being either Gary Stu or Marty Stu, is, let me give it a brief exclamation. Uh, Mary Sue is a character that is, for all purposes, both a author insertion and part of wish fulfillment. And it basically is this character is some sort of phenomenal protege or uber powerful character with very ideal circumstances making them an amazing thing. They are apparently well liked by all characters in the story, both good and bad. And they basically come to be the hero because they are that kind of person. This is the kind of person that if you would see them on television, you'd actually root for the bad guy. It's the kind of person that would make Dr. Sheldon Cooper someone you'd want to be around for 24-7. Readers generally dislike this character. And for good reason. The story becomes highly unbelievable with a Mary Sue. Now, of course, we should wonder where this term came from. It actually came from a Star Trek fan fiction. A parody, if my information serves me right. You see, Mary Sue was created in 1973. Um, this, this information is coming from Wikipedia. Um, it was created by a fan of Star Trek named Paula Smith for her own story, A Trekkie's Tale. And this was published in the fanzine Menagerie. It's obviously, it's a Star Trek fan. fan. It was a Star Trek fan magazine. It basically starred Lieutenant Mary Sue, uh, from the information I'm reading, uh, youngest lieutenant in Starfleet, only 15 and a half years old. And, uh, basically, she's. It started a whole classification where these characters are the youngest and smartest ever to graduate or have such powers with unprecedented skill levels and everything. It's unbelievable. But what is it really? If a writer is starting out, they don't necessarily have much imagination, and if they're writing on fan fiction or anything like that, your mind tends to focus on what is established and build off that. But if you have to build off an existing character, create a new character, well, this is where the Mary Sue comes in handy. Uh, the easiest thing one can do is, if you don't know how to create new characters, you base them off people you know, and who, who do we all know better than ourselves? So, an original character based off the phys physical looks and the wish fulfillment. The, character, the writer is poor, so the character is wealthy. The writer has no skill in hand-to-hand -hand 
fighting. So the character is a boxing protege. This is where it becomes unreal. But the fear of creating a Mary Sue, this disliked character type, also hampers writers. They don't want to get the stigma attached to them, but in the same respect, they want to write. And not being able to do, feel they can do both, they decide to do neither. It's a downside to it all. So how do you stop a Mary Sue from falling off? Remember that we are all flawed beings. Not a single one of us is perfect. And if you keep that in mind, remember your own flaws and all that. Well, that's what helps a Mary Sue, keep a Mary Sue from happening. You can create a Mary Sue. I mean, the Mary, the close thing to a Mary Sue, which would be an original character, that's based off your own appearance and your own, some of your own background. But in all essence, if it's not a perfect character that everybody fawns over and all that, you haven't created a Mary Sue. You've created a standalone character, which is a good thing. But are there times when Mary Sues work? Yes, there are times. Those are the few times when you when people avoid making their character too perfect. The character I created for my Generation X fanfics, Richard Kale, is in some ways a Mary Sue of me, an author insertion, if you will. At the time I created him, he was finishing up college, and I had latched on to this character which seemed underdeveloped and I pretty much created the character Richard Kale to help bring that character out of their shell. Would I have loved to have been in the comics in the comic book as one of the team members? Oh yes, but let's face it, that's a fantasy world. It's not the real world. So I knew basically not to do it. I asked for help, to which I basically got told, what you're doing is creating a Mary Sue, and give up now, it's going to suck. Well, no, I didn't give up, and I made sure they had flaws. Richard Kale, when he first appeared, was like myself an epileptic. My epilepsy has since gone into remission, so eventually, even Richard Kales went into remission. I require glasses, so so did Richard Kale. Something that changed as the series progressed. I do not like being in the position of leadership, but will take up the mantle if I have to. And Richard is the same way. He's avoiding that. But will has to, he has to take it on. You eventually have to become a leader and sometimes. In some ways he is blessed, in other ways he is flawed. In ways I am blessed, he is flawed. In ways that I am flawed, he is blessed. It's how it works. Checks and balances. That's everything in the world. You can't have one without the other. You can't do this without sacrificing that. So my advice to everyone out there who writes, as long as you don't make a Mary Sue character a perfect, as long as you don't make your original character perfect, you avoid the Mary Sue stigmata. You avoid the Mary Sue curse. You have to make your character flawed. It's plain and simple. Flaws are much more appealing than a character. 
I mean, let's face it. I think somebody did a bit of Mary Sue in Star Trek The Next Generation when they created Wesley Crusher. Either that or just realized how will how so how will we was at the time. Well, maybe it was been a column A and column B. I mean, let's face it. I think he was Will we Wesley Crusher was voted most likely to be blown out of an airlock. Twice. But keep in mind, flaws are good, perfection is bad. If you want to take a Generation X reference, remember how M was in the beginning of Generation X. Claiming to be perfect and oh so annoying. Anyhow, that's it for this one, and again, if you like these, please subscribe, and hopefully I'll do more, and give more advice when it comes to fic writing. Ta-ta!